In today's video, I want to go ahead and get our ship turning and rotating around. And I have a slight visual for this. The three types of rotation that we implement with our ship are demonstrated here on this little Google pic I picked up. So we have the pitch, which is rotating on the X axis. We have the yaw, which rotates on the Y axis. And we have the roll, which is going to rotate on the Z. So let's start off with the yaw. We'll go ahead, we'll jump into our code. And just like we did with thrust, I'm actually going to go ahead and make a separate method for this. It does not need to be public, so I'm just going to say void. Let's just do turn. And let's make sure we're calling that in the update. Keep our update nice and clean. And since we're going to be working on the yaw, I want to save the value on how much we're supposed to rotate and how fast into a float. So I'm just going to say float yaw is equal. And we're going to need some sort of input for the player multiplied by something similar to our movement speed, but maybe a turn speed. Then of course, since this is actually still being called during the update, we still have to do the time.delta time thing. So let's start off by making that variable first for the, for the turning speed. So I'm just gonna use the serialized field. I'm still gonna use a float. We did movement speed of 100. I remember we cut it down to about half. I like my ships to turn a little bit faster than they move. So I'm gonna say turn speed. I'm gonna start mine off at 60. And I'm actually gonna go ahead. I like to put the F at the end just so I know that that's a float. And I remembered that I did redo this to 50. I just wanna make sure I keep the same value in code, at least for now. We don't need to change it there though. And remember, changing the value there does not change it in game. Not if it's displayed in the inspector. Whatever is displayed in the inspector is gonna override any default value we put up here. So even if I change this to, let's say 500, well, let's just do it. And I go ahead and save it. We'll have to go ahead and comment up this line and we'll get an error. We'll come back into Unity, go ahead and select our player's ship. And take note that it's still 50 and not 500. This value is always gonna supersede what we have here. All right, so let's come back down here. And let's start filling in the values that we do know. So we have a turn speed. We know we need time dot delta time and then some input. And the input we know, just like before, we want to get from one of these axes. And we'll take a look at it in just a second here. The axis we actually are going to go for is the horizontal. And that'll give us how much to rotate. But to actually get our ship to rotate in game, we have to go ahead and call its transform, which we have cached as my T. And we're going to call the rotate method. And this takes a vector three. This is the one we're going to use here, the first one that just takes that vector three Euler angles. I'm going to go ahead and start it off. Actually, I think there's one that takes three floats, isn't there? Yeah, right here. These three floats. So number four, at least at the time of this recording, I'm actually going to use this one here instead, instead of making a new vector three. So I'm going to say zero for the rotation on the X. Now the rotation on the Y we looked at, it's called the yaw. So we're going to use that. And then right now, zero for the Z. We've not looked at that one yet. So let's go ahead and save this, jump into Unity and take a look at what we're doing here. I will give a quick demo just to make sure everything is working. So when we start it up, we go ahead and now we can rotate on the Y. We can move. Let's get to come back. There we go. And it rotates both ways and it should be rotating fairly smoothly. So let's go ahead and look at this input. We haven't fully gone over the inputs yet. And let's take this opportunity to do that now. So we're going to project settings input. And I'm going to go over the horizontal one right here. So the name is horizontal. You can give it a descriptive name, something along the lines of, you know, rotate around, or sorry, get a value from negative one to one according to the horizontal axis. All of these are left empty. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever filled any of these out. And I don't think you can actually get them anywhere in game either. I think the only display here in the inspector, it's something I really don't use. So I've just never filled them out. Now, descriptive negative name. If we take a look here, we have a positive button and a negative button. This is the description, you know, for the positive button or the positive value and the negative value. And the way this works in this case, if we hit the A and the D key, the A is the negative key. So that means it's going to put it from a range of zero to negative one. And the alt positive key is going to be from zero to one. And you notice there's two sets of buttons set up here. We have A and D. Then we also have the left and right that refers to the arrow keys. If for some reason you wanted to bind more than just four keys to this axis, you could go ahead, duplicate it, and then just go ahead and change more keys or add more keys to that one down there. We are gonna need one to make for pitch, so we'll be doing that in a minute. 
I'm gonna skip gravity just for a second and go into the dead. Now in old joysticks or controllers, whatever you kids wanna call them these days, uh, sometimes you're just sitting there not even touching the joystick and you'd watch, let's say a cursor on the screen, sometimes it would move and have a slight flicker from up and down all over the place. Adding this dead zone just says that any value that we receive from our input that is less than this value, ignore. Most devices these days are pretty accurate and we don't really need that big, big of a dead zone. But depending on the, de the, the controller or just the device in general that you're using, you might even actually have to go ahead and ramp this up. Now, gravity and sensitivity are just the opposites of each other. Remember when I said there was a difference between get access raw and get access? And get access had that slow ramp up and slow ramp down when you press the key and let it go? That's what these values do. When you go ahead and press a key down, it slowly ramps up and this is how fast it'll do it. And when you let go of that key and it slowly ramps down, this is how fast it comes down, the gravity. And of course, if any of this information changes in the future, you can always go ahead, just click on the book, that will open up Unity documentation and we'll see what the updates are. And the rest of these things we're not gonna to be touching just yet. The only ones we're concerned about are sensitivity and up right now. So I'm gonna go ahead, copy my horizontal and I'm just gonna duplicate array element. And we notice we get another horizontal down there. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this one up, take this one, and let's call it, uh, let's do pitch next. Now I'm not gonna bother giving it names. I'm not going to go ahead and give it two sets of keys. I'm just gonna say, uh, let's do R for positive, F for negative. So this is gonna rotate me up and down. Pitch was on the X axis. And all the rest of the values I am gonna leave. So the key thing to remember here is that when we hit the R key, we're getting a positive value. When we hit the negative key, we're getting a negative value. And that's kind of the takeaway in the input system. It's what I see most people get hung up on, especially when they come down here and start looking at axes, go with axes, right? Don't worry about that. Just remember that the positive value goes up with R, negative value down with F. So with that done, let's go ahead, switch and jump back into mono develop. And let's do the exact same thing for our pitch now. I'm gonna go ahead, make a new variable, just what I'm gonna call it, pitch. And this time we're gonna go through, and instead of grabbing horizontal, I'm gonna grab pitch, and did I capitalize it? I believe I did, right. And of course, you could go ahead and change this to yaw as well, the name, if you so desire, I'm not going to. And now I'm gonna come in here, and we'll put pitch in for the X value in our rotate. And we're gonna come in, and you might notice something here when we start it up. Now when I go to hit R, I rotate down, and when I hit F, I rotate up. That's not the exact behavior I want. I want it to be opposite of that. When I hit the R key, I want my ship to start rotating up. Now we could go in and change the values in the input manager, but I like to think of, of pressing R as being the positive value. So I'm actually gonna change it in code. And what I'm gonna do is just put a negative in front of pitch, save it off, and now when I come in, start my game back up, and I hit R. Uh, let's actually start that game up. Now when I hit R, I rotate up and F down. That's still kind of fast for a demo, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, whoops, look, I crashed. Hopefully that gets fixed in Unity 5.5. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop it. Do we get it back? Uh, maybe if I switch here and back, nope. There we go, if I pop it out and back in. That's what, nope, 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 not gonna say it. I'll just go ahead and close the tabs. It's bad enough that I'm actually gonna go ahead and just do the, redo everything, the two by three split. And I'm not gonna edit this out because if it does happen to you, at least you see how I fixed it. I do have my console back down here. I don't need it right now, but I'm gonna open it up. I just like to have my call. Okay, let's jump back in. And I want to do the rotation now, or the roll. Now you should be able to pause this video and go ahead and work the roll. I'd actually like you to do that. Pause the video, try to go ahead and implement the roll, and then go ahead and start it and see if you got the same as me. All right, here I go, I'm gonna do mine. Roll, roll. Now if we went ahead and try to run this right now, since we don't have an axie roll, you'd get an error about it. But code-wise, that's it. I'm probably gonna comment out my roll. I don't think I want them to be able to do barrel rolls. 
But let's go ahead. We'll jump in to the editor. And I'm going to go ahead, duplicate this one. Come back down. I call the roll with a capital R. And I guess I should have copied pitch so I didn't have to go ahead and get rid of these alts again. But it really doesn't matter. Now I need a way to do, I'm just trying to think hand position wise. Do we use Q and E for anything? Let me take a quick look here. I'm not using Q and E, so I'm going to use those for now. So negative will be Q, positive will be E. And let's try it out. I guess I should have saved first, but Q. And it looks like I'm going to want the negative values or switch them. That's actually kind of cool, isn't it? I'm going to go ahead and just put in the negative value for roll here. Just because it makes more sense to me logically that when I hit the Q key, it rolls to that direction. And if you don't like putting the negative in there, like I said, just switch it here. All right, we can now fly and do all of our turning. Woo! <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this one here and I'll see you over in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>